Check. Now I'm using a Music Man Stingray 5 and I've set all the controls flat so the bass, middle and treble controls are all in zero. Now the key with good EQ is that you use subtle amounts of it depending what you need for the room that you're playing in or the band you're playing in. Obviously plus 10 and minus 10 are very extreme settings but it lets you see how the sound changes. The bass control here as I've said before adds in that sort of low fullness to the sound so I'll start with it on zero and roll it off and you'll hear the difference that it makes. So you can hear it sounds very wiry when you roll it all the way off. If you're in a room that's very very big you'll roll a little bit of the bass off to help you control the sound more. So perhaps from zero back to there If I start to add more bass to the sound, we get a really big round fullness. Now that's even with it just boosted to five, it's already sounding absolutely huge in this room. So it's again, it's doubtful that you would need to boost it up much more than that. If you're a player who plays reggae, dub or dance style, That kind of thing might be what you need to dial in. Next up, let's look at the mid-range control. Now, as I said before, mid-range is that kind of honky nasal quality, but it's also where a lot of the body in a bass sound actually lives. One of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of young bass players make with their gear is that they turn the mids all the way down. Turning the mids down does sound quite cool when the bass is by itself, but when you play in a band, you need the mids to really help the bass sound poke through. So again, we'll start with the mids on zero. As I begin to back it off, it's all the way off. Now, a lot of people like that sound because it sounds quite cool. Um, it's got a nice slick high end, it's nice and full in the bottom and it's quite forgiving of your articulation in the middle. Um, a lot of people who play with this sometimes have technique issues that they don't realise. Turning up the mid-range really shows you the detail in the sound. If I go back from here to zero, and as I start to boost it, you can hear it's really pushing that nasal quality out. Finally we have the treble control. Another word for treble would be brightness. And so I started with this quite in the middle pile in the zero setting there. It's a nice bright sound. As I begin to roll it off. It starts to mellow the sound out. Take it all the way off. Now I find if I'm going to play styles that are quite old, let's say 50s, 60s, 70s kind of stuff, I tend to take all the treble off anyway. Bass amps back in those days didn't have the kind of high frequency response that we now do. So if I was playing a Jackson 5 tune, being able to roll the treble off minus 10 is definitely a good quality, especially as well things like at Motown, James Jamerson's sound, Donald Duck Dunn, uh, any of the stack stuff, roll that treble all the way off. You can actually boost the treble for pick playing and for slap playing to really help it cut through to give a lot of bite in the top end. And even for aggressive finger style, if you like a player like Flea, so you have that. That kind of thing, really, really aggressive. A little bit of treble boost really cuts that through. Yeah. 